Okay, very good. So, um, getting back over to this. So, getting over to this, ladies and gentlemen, we want to determine the, all the possible rational zeros. All right. So, to determine all the possible rational zeros, Justin, what the main, main sure that you want to make sure you have is determine your p and your q. And I'll get over why, how we're going to be using the p and the q. But the main important thing is you guys can have is the p is going to represent uh, your constant. And the q is going to repre represent your leading coefficient. So what we're going to be doing for the rational zero test all right, is simply what we're going to be doing is taking the factors plus or minus of p over q. Okay, So when doing that, you can determine, well, let's take a look at what is p and the factors of p. p is 10. The factors of 10 are going to be 10 times 1 and 5 times 2. Then let's take a look at q. q is 3. So the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. right? So what that equals is plus or minus all the factors of p, which are 10, 5, 2 and 1 over 3 and 1. All right? So now, to determine all of the possible rational zeros, we need to do plus or minus all of the possible rational zeros I can create from these set of um, factors. So therefore, plus or minus p over q for the factors equals plus or minus 10 over 3, comma, plus or minus 10 over 1, comma, plus or minus 5 over 3 comma plus or minus 5 over 1 comma plus or minus uh, 2 over 5 comma plus or minus 2 over 1 comma plus or minus 1 over 3 comma plus or minus 1 over 1. Right? You see what I did? I just took each numerator and put it under each denominator. Then I did the next numerator and did it under each denominator. And you can see I have this whole long list. Now, I wrote every single thing broken out, but obviously you don't need to write 10 over 1. You can just write 10. Right? And we look at this, though, but there's no repeating. And sometimes you will have repeating rational zeros. You don't need to include ones that repeat. You only need to include them once. So what this is telling us, all the rational zeros test tells us, is if we have a rational number as a 0, if we have a rational number, integers are rational numbers. See, the number 10 can be written as 10 over 1. If we have one of those as our zeros, it has to be one of these numbers. All right, either positive or negative. Yes, Hunter, question? No, no question. OK, so what I asked for, the reason why I asked that is, can the number, uh, can 0 be 3? Can one of the zeros be 3? No, because 3 is a rational number, and you can see that it's not listed in here, right? So therefore, you know that 3 is not a 0. Obviously, there's a lot of other numbers, but we'll, we'll investigate how else we're going to help work with that, OK? So that was that. That's the